I have failed to understand why are you drinking a whiskey with half soda and half water? Why can't you just drink it with full soda or full water? Recording? Yeah. Fantastic. Um, a very, very good evening or rather good night to all the viewers who are watching. We um, are consciously recording this at almost 10 p.m. in the night. Why? Because the person that we have on the show tonight is used to working late nights. Um, let me introduce our guest for tonight. It's Mr. Yangdo Plama. He is uh, India's most well-known, um, most respected bartender. Uh, and now also the owner, founder of the best cocktail bar in the country. It's called Sidecar. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure we can totally vouch for it because uh, if not me, my partner here, Shiv, <laughs> if he is not found at a shoot or in the studio, you will definitely find him at Sidecar sipping a wonderful cocktail. Thank you so much sir, for the part of this episode. Thank sir. you so much for doing this, sir. It's an honor to have you. Thank you so here. much for having me over. It's wonderful being here. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, sir. So I think we'll begin with asking you the most basic question, which I'm sure you've been asked a thousand times, but just for you know a very different kind of an audience. How did you uh, become a bartender, and it's been, how many years has it been for you uh, doing this? So it's been 25 years. This is my 25th year in in bartending and uh, so i started off in 1995 with the hyatt there's a bar called the polo lounge which still exists but uh, my intention was not to become a bartender i was a hotel hotel management graduate so that's how i joined hotels uh, but i was assigned to work at the polo lounge and uh, that's where my bartending journey started off but it did not start on day uh, did not start on day one it actually took off uh, six months after I worked in the Polo Lounge in different uh, places, you know, right from the back area where my core responsibility was to pick up stores, to keep, make sure that there was enough glasses in the front, all the soil glasses to wash, wipe, and do all of the backup stuff. Wow. And then gradually, after a couple of months of having worked at the back area is when I was sent to the front area where I was actually taking care of the floors. I was serving drinks on the floor. Uh, and uh, you know, nobody really knew that I would go behind the bar, but it was this one fine evening just got me thinking. Uh, you know, I looked at the bartender all the time and he was like the hero of the bar. And that is how I went across to him one day after we closed the bar at night. And I said, I want to be a bartender. And he said, it's a tough one. You know, do you like to be one? Because it requires a lot of knowledge. It requires a lot of hard work. And of course, really, really long hours. And I said, nothing doing, you know, I was, I was a, a, small country boy who had come to a place like Delhi, didn't have too many friends. So I said, I have enough time with me. You know, all that I can do is hmm. when I go home, I just sleep and then I can sacrifice an extra hour, extra couple of hours actually. And then I can I'll just hand over myself to you. And that's exactly what I did for the first one year. So I said, no questions asked. You tell me what needs to be done and I will just follow your instruction. And that is how my journey took off. So I always call myself as a bartender by accident, not really by intention. I'm so I, happy that such accidents also happen. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question actually. Uh, what is the difference between a bartender and a mixologist? <laughs> and which one out of the two are you? So I do not know when the word mixologist came into being. I, nobody really knows. If you ask most of the bartenders or so-called mixologists across the globe, nobody really knows when it came into being. And if I happen to look at the Indian dictionary, sorry, the English dictionary and try to figure out the meaning of the word mixologist, I don't think that word really, really exists. Mm -hmm. And if I had to define and differentiate between a bartender and a mixologist, I would say a mixologist can make drinks, but a bartender can make drinks and serve them as well. 
uh, a lot of times uh, the new age bartenders also call themselves bar chefs hmm? bar chefs so, yeah yeah that's also a new term you know but uh, i think at the end of the day we are all bartenders okay. Got so that. how does one how does a young boy or a girl today uh, think of becoming um, a bartender well, there are many ways now nowadays you know there's a lot of scope also because of the connectivity uh, the amount of information that is there online as well as on the ground so okay. for example uh, you know i run a bartending school i started up a bartending school in 2002 uh, seven years after i spent my time as a bartender is when i thought uh, you know i should start a bartending school and that was purely because i loved training mm -hmm. so uh, apart from me there are a couple of other bartending schools you know like delhi has a i think about five or six bartending schools mumbai has a couple of them bangalore has a few uh, i think calcutta has one or two hyderabad has one or two so there are a lot of bartending schools now so you could go through the bartending school so one can also learn on the job so you know there are a lot of hotel management graduates now and there is a lot of awareness about bartending beverages as a career even when you are doing a hotel management course so which was not the case when i was doing my hotel management course you can go for higher uh, studies in the area of beverages and bartending or he could just choose to work in a bar and learn on the job so that's another option does one have to be of legal drinking age to become a bartender how does that work to get into a school because it's spirit so it's it's extremely restricted and prohibitive how does that uh, come into picture so there is a standard age for drinking so for example in delhi it's 25 years okay but for service of alcohol it's 21 years so if somebody has attained the age of 21 he can be serving alcohol okay okay and how is like the industry structured in a way that if someone's studied to become a bartender or vis-a-vis -vis their wanting to learn on the job like what can their growth graph be like like how does one grow in this industry so for example if you've done a formal course in bartending or if you are a hotel management graduate and you want to become a bartender you you join a bar you join a hotel uh, your preference should be to work at a bar and then you start from the lowermost rung of the ladder so you start mm. as a bar back or you start as a trainee bartender so that does not mean that you're inside the bar right from day one you might have to work uh, on the floor to understand the menu to get a feel of the place to understand how things function uh, you know in the place the systems and then gradually based on your knowledge your know how is when you move on to uh, working behind the bar and as a trainee bartender or as a backup bartender right that's how the journey starts and based on your performance your knowledge and how well you pick up things uh, is when you then you know over a period of 6 months to 1 year is when you start mixing drinks so you work as a complete bartender or a junior bartender that's how the journey takes off so for sure you start from the lowermost rung of the ladder and from there onwards uh, you know after you spend like a year and a, uh, or two behind bars i think then it is entirely based upon how you shape it up for yourself i actually wanted to ask that considering it's an industry that involves alcohol how does a parent maybe like you know feel safe with the fact that their child wants to take this up as a profession so for a normal middle class indian family hmm. you know alcohol the sound of alcohol itself is no no all right you know yeah. we've, we've had instances where parents have actually gone really or really really gone worried and very anxious about their child deciding to become a bartender and working in the field of alcoholic beverages but now i think parents have also come of age and understood the fact that you know uh, alcohol is not necessarily a, a bad product it's about how you how you you know use it and how you understand it i think if you misunderstand it is where there is there is an issue and that could happen to anybody it doesn't have to be a person who is always working with alcohol exactly another insecurity that parents generally have with professions that i consider off beat or let's say parallel is that uh, are they stable are they financially uh, sustainable so as someone who's been in the industry for over 25 years sir how would you uh, convey that 
if done well, this can also be a legitimate um, profession in terms of uh, return on investment and money. Now, what happens is uh, there was a time when somebody like me could become uh, either a hotelier and uh, I choose to be a bartender much later. But now it is opened up to. So if you if you're from the beverage field, you don't just necessarily have to work in a bar or a, or a restaurant or a hotel. You could explore the world of alcohol, so which means alcohol production, alcohol manufacturing. Uh, you know, there are people who are alcohol influencers. There are people who are opinion makers in alcohol. So alcohol journalism, that's, that's a big thing that a lot of people are doing. Uh, alcohol marketing, you know, like a lot of liquor industries, the multinational brands initially would hire only MBAs to work for their company. Then they realized on the field, especially when they have to do a lot of their programs, which is directly related to the bartender and it's, and that sale and usage of alcohol is when they realized that you needed people who have some amount of basic on the ground on knowledge it. about how it works. Right. Yeah. So, so that's, that's how now good beverage companies, a lot of these brands have started to hire, you know, brand ambassadors for their brands here in India and outside of India, wow. outside of India. And they're all bartenders. They all, uh, they were all bartenders once upon a time. They oh. specialize, they won competitions and, uh, hmm. They are in a completely different salary bracket now and the amount of recognition and travel and the facilities and the exposure that has been provided to them is tremendous. And now I think, sir, uh, it's a very, uh, you know, every, every art form, every skill, every, every uh, industry for that matter may have a technical skill. So as a bartender, there is, I'm assuming, a whole lot of technical know-how that one needs to have when it comes to mixing spirits, understanding of flavor. but uh, in a more philosophical way, what do you suggest that a young person who is, let's say, not ready to dabble with alcohol because of you know age, uh, what are some of the other skills, invisible skills, soft skills that you feel a bartender will benefit from? When I came into bartending, you know, 25 years ago, I used to be a very quiet child. You know, I used to be a very young lad, half the time a little confused, rattled. But the good thing about me probably at that time was I, I was a good listener. So I would, you know, I would do my drinks, I would serve the drinks, fix the drinks, and I would go to the corner of the bar and hang around there if I'm not busy. And I would love listening to the conversations that the guests had across the bar counter. And that gave me a lot of ideas. And, you know, at that time I spoke less, I listened a lot. But nowadays when I talk to bartenders, I have to give them examples, is when I pick up a lot of the stories that I heard from this uh, regulars in the bar and I give them stories of life and, you know, important lessons of life that I learned myself personally, you know, and there were a lot of inspirations for me, you know, a lot of my guests were my inspiration. Now, uh, you know, there are people who love reading, there are people who love creative writing, there are people who love good conversations, there are people who lo love sports, so every hobby or every interest that you have, you know, you could explore upon it and you can still be a good bartender, you know, I still remember, uh, uh, in 1996, you know, I used to be in the Polo Lounge at the Hyde. We had two televisions at the back and we had a lot of long staying guests in the hotel, mostly Europeans, Americans. Okay. And during that time in, in 1996 is when the Euro 96, the European football championship was being held in England. And there were a lot of Englishmen staying in the hotel and there were a lot of Germans staying in the hotel. And, you know, they, are, they were so used to going to a bar uh, in the neighborhood and watching the game. And they did. And we didn't have enough bars outside the hotels then. So everybody had to come down to the bar. And I was anyways a footballer when I was in school. So my wow. knowledge about football and my interest about football and my passion, uh, actually, that was the connect that I had with a lot of guests. It was not alcohol. It was not bartending. It was the game of football. So we all would sit in the bar after our operations. We had taken a special permission from a GM. The first mm -hmm. game would kick off at 12.30. So the bar would shut at 12. And we would just close the bar, sit in the back sofa and watch the game. You know, it was interesting. So the connect with my guests did not happen because of great cocktails. Probably at that time, I was still making very amateur basic cocktails, but it was because of my love for sports. So, you know, that is another connect with it. There were people who came to the bar and I, I'm not somebody who follows politics, but uh, through a lot of conversation that people had at the bar, I understood politics. And then therefore, you wow. know, I, I started reading about politics a little bit here and there. And that's how I gathered my information and knowledge. So any little skill that you have, whether it's sports, whether it is politics, whether it is business, whether it is conversation, reading, any kind of hobby, you know, it could all add up 
to you know even even for example dressing up you know bartenders need we talk a lot about grooming standards you need to look look good you need to have a a better outlook in order with in order to be approachable as yeah. a bartender now that you wow. said it actually it just is just a realization that you know when you are at a bar and if you're approaching the bar you do like Skim through the people check out behind the, the bar. And you <laughs> check out the check bartender. Out. <laughs> you no. check out the bartender. No, but like you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Sir, I think um, from this, I have an offshoot, and this will mark the end of the technical section information that we have. What are some of the tougher aspects of this business? Uh, the lure of being checked out at the bar, the lure of having conversation, the lure of having uh, to work at a fancy place. all that aside i'm sure there are certain um aspects of this business that one needs to be aware of in terms of how tough it can get yeah first and the foremost please understand that when when the world goes to sleep you go to work that that's number 1 right so everything for you is odd hours you wake up late in the morning so your your lunch is your breakfast right uh mm. your your dinner is your lunch and then uh, you do not know whether you even get the opportunity to eat dinner or not mm. so that's a bigger big disadvantage okay when the world celebrates celebrates any occasion you are the busiest at work oh. right so whether it's christmas whether it's new year's eve you are the busiest guy so you need to be able to make the sacrifices when everybody says it's weekend friday evening let's go meet up <laughs> friends you are working the hardest right so those are first things beyond that it's also about your own health you know you are sleeping in odd hours you are eating uh, a lot of times you're not eating the right kind of foods so you've got to be careful your physical fitness you know uh, for the longest time when i was bartending the initial few years i did not even see sunshine in delhi i, I did not know when the sun uh, actually uh, would come out in the morning and one fine day i still remember after almost a year i came home it was 4 in the morning i stayed back I had a cup mm. of tea. I didn't sleep. I stayed back to see when does the sun really rise in Delhi. <laughs> That is what I did. So, so one has to one has to understand that there is a lot of sacrifice in that aspect. Mm. Also, uh, we always say in you know, it's changed to a large extent. But when I first joined hotels, my senior always said in Hindi specifically said, "Reporting time is घर जाने का time नहीं है." There's always a reporting time, but there's no time to go home. <laughs> So if you report late, you're asked why you're reporting late, right? But nobody tells you if you if you worked a few extra hours, extra nobody hours, tells you why did yeah. you work so extra hours. So those are disadvantages. Uh, the other disadvantage that you seriously have is, uh, you know, you are always dealing with a very sensitive product. Mm. So it could hit on you uh, in the wrong sense. So you you have to have that. good control of your mind that's another thing the other thing that uh, you know one of my training managers always mentioned to me early on which stuck to my head very strongly is he would always tell us that in the hospitality field especially if you're working in a fancy bar or a fancy hotel or a restaurant you know you'll have fancy people coming to the place people in fancy cars people wearing expensive clothes expensive watches you know and you tend to get carried away you're not one of them you're not one of them you're not a multimillionaire right so at an early age when you are working in this business a lot of times you tend to get carried away you want to be and then you overspend or you you lose out completely on your control over how to manage your finances yeah that also becomes a big issue so you mm. get really really carried away so these are some of the major temptation the disadvantages of uh, of this particular field as well uh, so you got to have a good control over it uh what what do you look for in a bartender when you hiring someone say so for site whenever bar. i yeah so whenever i hire a bartender i never ask him any of the technical questions i never ask him about difference between cocktail a and cocktail b or a difference between a whiskey or a vodka i never oh, ask him any of the technical questions hmm. because for me from my experience what i have realized is if a guy has no know how even if he's come from a hotel management college or a bartending hmm. institute most of the people who come out of even bartending institute would actually have no clue about alcoholic beverages they're still very very amateur so you ask them one technical question then they falter okay that's uh, i always feel that all of those things i can always give it to him yeah you know yeah what i look for what i look for in a guy is 
Does the person possess the warmth, number one? The rest, I can always give it to him. I can give him great knowledge. I can give him the know-how of techniques, sure. the art of service. I can teach him everything else, but I cannot teach him the softer skills. I cannot teach him how to smile. Yeah. It's not possible. You know, I cannot teach him how to be passionate. I can say a hundred times that you've got to be passionate, but I can't put that passion inside the person. Yeah. Uh, so those are the things that I look for. I never ever look for technical know-how. Hmm. I think now we can come to the fun section. You know, we have a yes. list of okay. some really stupid questions that I am Dumb sure questions. people... Dumb is ah. the word. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Actually, your question. So to start, uh, who is the biggest celebrity that you've ever served? So, uh, you know, Mr. Bill Clinton was somebody that I remember. <laughs> so, uh, I remember 2005 when I actually, I, I didn't serve him a cocktail because he would not drink alcohol. I served him a non-alcoholic beverage, but it was a profession of bartending that actually allowed me to serve him a drink, number one, and also take a picture with him. Shiv, do you want to take the next question? Can I ask? It's a very stupid question. Please go for it. Yeah, yeah. It will prove who's dumber in the both of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, as bartenders, do you guys get free alcohol? After 25 years, I do. So, so when I visit bars, especially in India, Delhi, Bombay, then I never pay for alcohol. <laughs> but uh, uh, at a serious level, there isn't, you know, you don't really get alcohol as a, as a you know, uh, perk. You don't get to drink alcohol as a perk. But what we do at times is for a slightly senior person, you know, if you have a senior bartender or a bartender who's got seven, eight years of experience and knows how to deal with customers and has that maturity in him, you allow, it's not an allowance for the bartender to drink, but you know, there are times when uh, the going is great. There's great energy at the bar and you have this one, there are people who are having a fantastic time and what happens usually is Sometimes the guest offers the bartender to join him for a shot, for a drink. And mm-hmm. uh, we allow that. We allow that. We always say, okay, go ahead, have a, have a drink. It's okay. So the last question for the night, I think you yes. will have it. Uh, the one thing that irritates you or you hate about the way Indians drink. There is only one thing that strikes my head. <laughs> and it's scotch with half soda and half water. Okay. I have failed to understand... Why are you drinking a whiskey with half soda and half water? Why can't you just drink it with full soda or full water? Mm-hmm. So I don't understand. It's neither soda nor water, nor is it whiskey. So you do not know what it is. Uh, I'm, and, and I'm sure there's also some, some uh, so I've also experienced it, something with wines. No, so I, I've seen a lot of, uh, I would not call them connoisseurs of wine, but I would probably say wine drinkers. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of them have picked a word from probably uh, sessions that they've attended or Mm -hmm. somewhere, or they've probably read about wines or whatever. And they talk about how robust the wine was. Full bodied. Yeah, full bodied (laughs) or how dry the wine was. Uh, And then you give him, you give another wine of a completely different category and they still come out with the same word. But that's okay. You know, that's that's also. That's what uh, keeps the bar running at times. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. (laughs) Okay, I think before we leave, before we let you go, if the world was ending tonight and I give you superpowers to make the entire world one cocktail, like one cocktail, what would you be serving to the world? Uh, Let me just see if I have. uh, So I would take a rum like this, you know. So this is this is an aged rum. It's an 1824. It's aged for almost 12 years. Wow. So I would pick up a rum like this and I make an old fashioned with this rum. And the reason why I chose to say I would make a rum old fashioned is, uh, it's probably the most versatile of all the spirits. And then when you said you would like to make one drink for the whole world, I think the amount of people that rum appeals to, it, no other spirit can appeal to. So I would love to make a nice aged rum old fashioned. We are hoping that this lockdown ends so that we can Finally, you have you. Yeah, we can finally have you where the world deserves <laughs> you to be. So I think we we would love to see you behind the bar once again, sir. Yes. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And sir. thank you, thank you once again for having me in this uh, series of yours. It was thank wonderful you, sir. being here. Thank you. Wonderful and for I us hope, too. Uh, I've been able to give whatever information that is required. 
all the best and thank you very much never doubt thank it you. thank guys. you sir have a good thank night you. stay good safe night. all the best to house arrest we'll see you soon <laughs> bye bye thank you sir thank you thank you sir.